Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly video. We're about to get cooking the 10 dishes on this week's menu. Remember, you can skip to the dishes that you've ordered or watch the whole thing so next time you're on the order you know what dishes you really want. Um, remember also, last order Sunday night for next, week, next week's menu. There's loads of new items on the menu as well. We've got our Sunday best. This, uh, this weekend it's going to be a roast salad of lamb. Um, we've got cheese gougeres, we've got tarama starts, we've got our lovely cuttlefish egg breadsticks. So loads happening. Yuba Chef is expanding. Check next week's. Let's get cooking. So let's get cooking. First course is our weekly bake as usual. Here you've got a woodland mushroom for gas here. So lovely bread made by us. It's got a little bit of uh, polenta just on the top and the bottom, that lovely little bit of crunch. Mushrooms go through. It's going in the oven. Get some rapeseed oil just before it goes in. This is going to help give it a lovely glaze in the oven for about six minutes. So I've got my oven at the back. Let the walk over. Soon we're going to have a little uh, commie chef helping. Uh, on these videos, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. Anyway, I digress. Next bit for the butter you've got here, this is your little crumb. So this is your smoked bacon, thyme crumb in here. What you want to do, take your smoked bacon and thyme butter. You see I'm going to roll it in all that lovely bacony goodness and then pick it up, start rolling it in your hands. And the idea is here, you get a really nice coating all around this. The flavour of this is absolutely awesome. So if you're watching this and you haven't ordered for this week, this is what you're missing. So let's bring my board over. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that extra crumb on the top. I'm gonna to put that just sitting already. Tiny bit of salt. And then we're gonna be back in about five, six minutes. I'm gonna show you this for gas with that lovely butter to serve. Out comes my for gas. There we go, onto your board, and remember, even more. Bit of a bit more oil on there, like so. Just get your hand and just kind of make sure that's all nicely worked into the top. Tiny bit of salt, like so. And then here we go. Either side, and what a lovely tear and share, taking that to the table. Wooden mushroom for gas, smoked bacon, thyme butter, with that lovely little crack coating on the outside. Hope you enjoy the first bake course. First course for you is a smoked haddock scotch egg. Take it out of your container, like so. Now it wants to go in the oven. Put a little bit of oil on the top of there. About 12 to 14 minutes, this is going in. So, let's get that cooking. And then the garnishes. So we've got a lovely little lemon dressing just here. And then in there, you'll see lovely thinly sliced baby cucumber, selection of little flowers. We've got some brown shrimps in there, dill. So what I want you to do, just push some of that shrimp and herb aside, get a bit of dressing on the cucumber, like so. Give it a little work in, and that way the dressing will start to work on the cucumber and just to almost slightly cook it. So we'll leave that like that. Then what we'll do, come back in just as our scotch egg comes out, I'm going to show you garnishing the cucumber in your bowl, a little bit more dressing and we were ready to serve. Okay, so my scotch egg is just coming up for 12 minutes in the oven. So what I'm going to do is just start building up some of my garnishes in the dish. So I've got lovely bits of dill there, Got my cucumber you see where that's just started to wilt it enables you to build up the cucumber nicely so get a little bit of height you don't have to fold every piece over but it just makes for a little bit more interest in the dish like so keep on building that around and then all that will be left to do is get a little bit more dressing on the plate get our scotch egg out so we've done quite a few versions of the scotch egg. The haddock one is always a real favourite, hence why it's back on the menu. So a few more in there. Then let's get, get in there with those shrimps. Lovely little flavour bombs. And of course, some more of that fresh dill. Those lovely little pinky blue flowers mixed in there. Beautiful. Almost set. Uh, uh, happy with that. Then a little bit more dressing. So 
dressing. I'm not gonna kind of cover it, but I'm just putting little spots of dressing. Touch of rapeseed oil, just to split out that color. Again, optional. And then let's grab our Scott Jake. Lovely and crisp, up to you, but I like to add a tiny bit of mold and salt on the top, just to kind of crumble it between your fingers. Make sure you've got a nice little hole in the center. And then look at that, just sit that in there. A little quick re rearrange of any of the herbs and things. And there you go. That's your first course, you be chef menu this week, smoked salad, scotch egg, all of the favorites. Back with Avengers. One of my favorites now on the menu, uh, this is a chicken liver parfait. But in the bottom, we've got the parfait, but then we've covered it in a lovely summer truffle butter. Make sure you take it out of the fridge about 10, 15 minutes before you go eat it. It's gonna warm up slightly. It's gonna taste even better. So what we're gonna do, I'll save you with this lovely little relish just here. This is caramelized shallot and red wine relish. So take a nice, it's almost like a chutney, but take a nice little quenelle of that between spoons. And then let's get that right in the middle. Then we've got some red wine onions. It's just little baby onions that we cooked in like a reduced red, red wine stock. So I'm just going to start putting quite a few of those all the way around the butter, like so. There you go, happy with that. And then a little bit of that lovely reduced red wine. Beautiful. Then let's get some nasturtion. So you've got these beautiful nasturtion leaves. I'm gonna arrange some of those. These are beautiful and peppery, not just on there for the color, they're on there for flavor as well. So on a good few of those dotted about, happy with that. A tiny bit of mold and salt just on the top of that butter. A little bit of rapeseed just to dress those nasturtion leaves like so. Lovely. Get that onto your plate and then crispy sourdough that we sent you with as well. You can even stick that kind of into the top or for me, just put that just on the side. Look at that. Lovely starter, chicken liver parfait taken to a new heights with that summer truffle butter on the top. Crispy cruise to dive in with. Wonderful starter now coming up for you. This is made with Isle of Wight tomatoes, simply the best. So, got a plate here all ready to go. Got my tomatoes, whole different selection of Isle of Wight ones here. Some of them were semi dried. So just slightly kind of shriveled, this just intensifies the flavor. Um, and then we've got tomato water dressing. So we've got all the tomatoes together, mashed them together, held them up in a muslin cloth, and got all of that lovely clear juice out of them. Then we've mixed that with rapeseed oil, touch of seasoning as well. So what you want to do is really generously dress all of your tomatoes with that wonderful dressing. Touch of salt as well. We don't send them with seasoning on because that will draw all of the moisture out of them. So nice, nice seasoning. You'd be surprised how much seasoning they can take. Then what we're gonna do, let's start getting these onto our plate. Give them a little drain as you place them on. And what you're looking to do is kind of start building a nice little base. Keep the, the shape as you go. And then start getting a bit of height onto it. So again, spend a bit of time, play with the colours, and layer it all up. So we'll keep going. And then what we're gonna do after this, we're gonna get our goat's cheese, which I've just got out of room temperature. And we're gonna arrange that, pipe little, little piles of that on the top. So, some of those small little lovely golden baby plum. All placed around nicely. Like so. So, once you're happy, 
little wipe down, a little clean up, and your goat's cheese. So get your bag of goat's cheese, take a knife, cut off the end, and then you could do a little test pipe before you go. Just pipe any of that little loose cheese, and then I'm gonna start piping. See that? Lovely little delicate piles of goat's cheese. This is green barn goat's cheese in here. They don't hang it too long, so it's lovely and light. A lot of people, I understand, don't like goat's cheese because it has that stringent flavor, but this is definitely not like that. So, lots of lovely little piles of the goat's cheese all over, like so. Then, what's left to do? Just bring that head so you can see. Then we're gonna get all these lovely selection of flowers herbs we've got here, we've got tarragon, one of my favourites, borage, just look at that leaf, what a beautiful leaf that is. So then, just start arranging all those flowers, you could use a little pair of tongs, a little pair of forceps, just can help place them nice and delicately. We send it obviously with a little bit of absorbent paper just on the top, which keeps them all nice and fresh. So, take your time. Beautiful little pink flowers I'm gonna go in with between. We've got some chive tips. You can see how this really starts to come together. So, almost there. More borage in the side. Sturgeon flowers, really, really punchy on the color. Almost, almost tarragon, beautiful flavour. And there we go. Get that one in there. Lovely. Final little clean up of that plate, and then back to our dressing. Give it a stir, and then just put little pockets of it. Try not to go over the flowers too much because that will wilt them down just so that you can get a little bit of dressing. And you can see how that all comes together. And I can't tell you how happy I am with that. Lovely salad, I like tomatoes, green barn goat's cheese, herbs and flowers uh, locally picked. Enjoy the starter. Hi, on to main courses now. Uh, we've got a fillet of stone bass for you. So stone bass is very, very similar to sea bass, just slightly bigger scales on the outside, still lovely and meaty. Uh, we've got this lovely steak, we just pan fried off for you already. Touch of oil on the top of there, and then bass going in the oven eight to 10 minutes. At the same time, put your croquettes in. So this is a Colston Bassett and potato uh, cheese croquette in here. So eight to 10 minutes, let's get that in. Remember as well, oven all preheated. Everything is 190, so you can keep the oven at the same temperature, you don't have to worry about changing temperatures. Now my garnishes, when we come back, I've got this super uh, vibrant green broccoli puree. That's going to be on the stove, just gently warm it up, so I'm just going to put that air ready to heat up. I've got a little bit of crispy rice, very similar to sugar puffs, but little blown wild rice, really, really lovely texture. That's just going to be room temperature. A touch of broccoli dressing, this is just going to go onto the plate thereafter, and some charred uh, 10 stem broccoli. This is going to go in the oven four to five minutes. So obviously do the maths once your uh, the, the uh, croquettes and the bass have been for a certain amount of time in the broccoli, and then we'll be back and I'm going to show you how to put this together. So just getting my bass out here. That's my lovely bit of stone bass. Got my plate under the grill and I'm ready. Croquettes and let's just grab our broccoli. Now it comes. Smell on that's amazing. We just char it on the stove after it's been blanched. So, what you need to do now, get your broccoli puree. That's just been heated up. I'm going to take a nice little spoon of that, just on the side of my plate. And get a little pallet knife, just push it into the broccoli, and just a little swipe across. Lovely and chefy. Then, let's get your broccoli charred. Start building that around. And what you're aiming for here is a lovely little platform 
just on what on which to put your bass. So that's all good to go. Find out the trays, nice and hot. Then our bass. Let's sit that. Look at that lovely piece of bass. Croquettes, Colston Bassett, just around. Then what we're going to do? Get that little bit of. This is just juiced broccoli. Touch of rapeseed oil. Tiny bit of lemon juice, just to cut through all those flavours on there. So a little bit of dressing, and then just to finish off, your little puffed wild rice. This is just as that extra texture. So I'm just going to put not too much, but a few little pieces. And there you have it. That is my fillet stone bass, Colston Bassett and 10 stone broccoli. Very excited about this next main course. Uh, this is a beautiful ribeye. So ribeye of beef just here, all sealed. We've already coloured it off you, so you haven't got to worry about getting a smoky kitchen. So what you want to do, just take it out of your bag, put it onto your tray, tiny bit of oil, which is already cut, part cooked at this stage. You can see that it's just wrapped in serrano ham around the outside. It's already smelling absolutely fantastic, but this beef's going to go in the oven about 10 to 12 minutes. If you want it cooking more, well, more well done, another six to eight minutes on top. Most important thing, when it comes out of the oven, rest it for at least three to four minutes. So that's going to go in the oven now for 10 minutes. In it goes. I like my meat quite rare, medium rare, so I'm going to only cook it for the 10. And my garnishes, got these lovely little polenta chips just here, flavoured with uh, truffle. Uh, that's going to go in there for about six to eight minutes, just until they crisp up and they're warm. They won't take long at all. Um, basically, we're going to turn these little fries into aspen fries. So we've got in here parmesan, a touch of parsley dust, truffle salt. So that's going to go in shortly. Then here, Bernays butter. So like your Bernays sauce, but now we've got all of the flavours. We've got shallots, we've got tarragon. Um, so that's just going to be at room temperature. And then we're going to pop that on our steak when we serve it. Tarragon dressing. And then let's un undo this. So you can see in here, there's your lovely salad. So in here we've got a little romaine leaf underneath which we're gonna build all the salad up in. So, back in about 10 minutes, um, my beef will be resting uh, and I'll show you how to put all of this dish together. So, just getting my beef out. There we go. Mind those trays, of course, always. Make sure you've got a nice cloth. So, let's bring the beef over. There's our fries. Lens fries. My plate just warmed it up. I don't want it too hot because, of course, it's got the salad on. So, what we're going to do is take the beef off the tray so that can start resting. Ideally, three, four minutes as much as you can spare uh, to rest it. Now, what we want to do also, you see your fries you've just got here. This is the polenta fries. Get some of the parmesan, it's in the pot. Parmesan, this has got some truffle salt in there as well, and it's got some lovely parsley uh, dust on there. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just coat them in there and just give it a little little shake. And then the residual heat from those as they've come out of the oven will just help to start melting them in. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. And then whilst we do our salad, I'm just going to leave those on the side just for that cheese to melt slightly. So then your salad. Take out your leaf. That's a little remain leaf in there. And then you've got your tarragon dressing. Give it a nice stir. Dress nicely all over. A little bit more seasoning. And then just with your hand or a spoon, just gently kind of coat all the lettuce. Really, really important with salad. That, that lettuce, uh, that dressing, sorry, is all the way around it. It's gonna make all of the flavors pop. So beautiful salad leaves. Then, what I'm going to do, take a little bit of my tarragon dressing. I'm just going to dress my salad leaf. And then I'm going to start building up some of those leaves on the side. And again, it's worth taking your time with this because the most important thing you want here is height. So use the leaves in there to enable you to get a lovely height on the salad. So some of those little red mustard frills going through there. And then we're just going to build up. And again, this is just taking 
a humble salad to New Heights, which is of course easy with these lovely salad leaves that I've got here from Mon Gun Kitchen, one of our fabulous suppliers here on the Isle of Wight. So look at that. Keep going, keep going. And then we've put you some very thinly sliced red onion in the box. We put you some radish. So just get some of those beautiful slices in there. Keep going. Worth the time, I can assure you. Go back. Beautiful bits of tarragon. We're almost there. Finish with a touch of radish. There we go. So that is our salad, all good to go. Little rinse of hands. And then let's get our Bernays butter. Let's just lift that out of your pot on top of your beef. And again, the residual heat from the beef will just start to melt that. When you get to the table, you still want to see, of course, all of that beautiful butter on the top. Then I'm going to get a pan. I'm going to get some of my fries. And I'm just going to get, you can serve these how you like, completely up to you. But I'm quite liking getting all of those. See that stringy, that cheese is beautifully gone there. Like so, let's get them all, all built up on there. Finish, tiny bit of that leftover cheese. Let's get that onto our plate. All that's left to do, get your stunning bit of ribeye. Look at that. This is Ubi Chef ribeye, plenty of chips, aspen fries and that wonderful garden salad. Up next we've got a risotto of sweet corn and used cheese in here as well. So you've got some lovely saffron going through that, of course the sweet corn. Uh, we've got this beautiful uh, little cooking liquor here which I'm going to put all of that in. So this is what we cook the rice in. That's going to go onto our stove, get the heat on. And I'm just going to give that the occasional stir as that comes up to the simmer. And then that's going to be four to five minutes, depending on how you like the risotto cooked. If you like it a little bit more al dente, the four, a bit more five. Then garnishes. Runner beans, beautiful and seasoned, butter. Let's get them into a dish with all of the butter in there. That's just going to go on the edge of the stove. I'm just going to keep tossing that over just to warm them up. Charred sweet corn, absolutely lovely. So we've, we've blanched whole cobs and then we've charred it on the outside with a blowtorch and just cut those off you. Two to three minutes in the oven, as well as your popcorn. So I've got some popcorn here, which is just coated in uh, smoked pimento. So three to four minutes on both of those. I'm just gonna give my risotto a little bit longer before I put them in. So give that a nice stir around, keep stirring, keep tossing your beans over, be back in a few minutes and I'll show you how this one comes together. So, risotto, it's been cooking for about four minutes now. There's my beans, all lumped in, glazed up, you can see, See there? So it's still still quite soft, so I'm just gonna get it back on. I reckon four and a half that will do. Hot plate. Let's grab our hot corn and charred corn out. That smell there yeah, is absolutely awesome. Look at that smoke pimento in there. So there we go, that's almost just as we were doing that, it's thickened up enough. So, Heat off, bring that over. Most important thing as well, give it a taste. I'm happy with that, but a tiny bit more salt just to finish it. And again, up to you. Some people like a little bit more. So, nice stir. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take our risotto rice. Look at that texture of that. Beautiful and creamy with no cream in it, of course. So, let's just use that spatula just to tamper that out. On a nice layer of it. No stodgy risotto here. So, that's all spread out. 
nicely. And then what we'll do, take some of those beans. So I'm just going to take a few, start arranging them all the way around. Of course, serve some extra on the side. You don't want to cover, cover it completely. There we go, I'm happy with that. Then let's get some of our charred corn. Another dimension of flavour on there. And this will just leave us having to finish off with that popcorn. So back we go, give it a little stir. You can see in the bottom of there, that colour you get from that butter. Which is of course dairy free butter though, because this is our vegan course. So, little pieces of fat all the way over. A few escapes there. There we go. Keep that all in the middle. Quick little clean up. And then I'm going to get some of that remaining smoked paprika and just finish off the top of risotto with that. And there we go. So that's my vegetarian course for this week, a wonderful sweet corn risotto. On to desserts now. This is a summer pudding coming up now. So what you're gonna do, take your summer pudding now and just a little tap it out of the eco pot, get hold of that clean from the side and then out it comes. There you go. So what you're gonna do, just put, gently pull the clean film like that, just away from the sides. Take a little bit of time doing that, all the way around it, like so. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a little spatula underneath it, as to help me move it shortly, and there it is. So, then, get some of your red fruit sauce. You'll notice I've got my parfait out, it's my clotted cream parfait, that's all ready to go. I'm gonna put a little bit of red fruit sauce, just on my plate and I'm going to spread it out just with the back of a spoon. Then I'm going to get some more of my red fruit sauce and I'm just going to spoon it onto the top. You see I just kind of use a spoon to work it all around. That's going to give your summer pudding a beautiful shine just before you serve it. So the reason is we can't make it too saucy in the container is when you demold it, it's gonna make it quite difficult for you to get on the plate. So that's why we sent you with a bit of sauce. Touch more on there, beautiful. Lift it off, away from where you've been dressing it and then carefully slide that onto your sauce, like so. A little scrape of our board. Then let's get our pathway. You can just pull it out on the paper that it comes on. Gently take the paper off, and then I'm going to sit it, pry the place right on top. All we have to do, get some of your confit lemon and mint leaves. So get some of those out, and you can plate this however you like, but I'm just going to kind of get a few of the real tall ones. Sit them in, you can see where they've been nice and crystallised, so lovely and crunchy. Just get some of those pieces of mint, a few kind of hanging off the sides. Just empty them out, make it easier for me to get hold of them. Another one just in there, let's just sit that. A few more before our lemon. There you go. And then that, let's get some of our lemon there. A few little lovely pieces, beautiful flavours, like so. And there you go, lovely little dessert for you. That is our summer pudding, first one on the UV Chef menu. Uh, clotted cream parfait on the top, crispy mint, and some lovely comfy lemon. Hope you enjoy it.
Here we've got a peach melba shoe bun for our next dessert. So you see it's got this lovely crackle and glaze on the top of the shoe bun. This has just been in the oven, it says in the instructions, two to three minutes. This is just gonna re-crisp the, uh, the shoe bun, make it lovely and fresh. So make sure it goes in and then make sure it cools down before you put your cream in, otherwise you're gonna end up with lots of melted cream everywhere. So take the lid off, then in here you've got this lovely vanilla diplomat cream. I'm just gonna cut off the edge of my piping bag. Then I'm gonna pipe in that lovely rich vanilla cream, like so. Then let's get our peaches. So you've got a little salad of peaches with some nice lemon thyme in. So as you put it in, just drain them off slightly from the syrup that we've made for you, just to send them in. So peaches, all inside, nice and level, like so. Then we're gonna get our little blood peach puree. Again, pipe cut off the end. And you see, I'm just gonna Put some nice little pipings off that peach puree all the way around. And get your raspberries, just carefully empty them out onto your board. And then, like so, go around and just place those on that little blood peach puree. Just it's gonna help center them and keep them, keep them nice and stuck in the shoe bun so like so if you've got any over I'm just gonna put them in the center like that let's get a little bit of our syrup back so that's a little bit of our peach syrup just going on the top and all that's left to do get your lid let's just sit down the top let's grab our Nice dish or bowl, whichever you want to prefer to serve it in. Lift that in like so, and there you go. Lovely peach melba shoe bun full of raspberries, peach, and that lovely vanilla cream. Last course for your newbie chef menu this week. I'm just getting my cheeses just off the paper. They've been out 15 minutes warming up. Really, really important. Longer if you can afford as well. So let's start getting them. Remember, we send it also cheese notes every week. So you can look at that, you can see what order they go in. Let's get our lovely slice of door stone first of all. Next one, this beautiful Baron Bigod on there. Then we've got uh, Miss Kirkham's Langshire. That's going on. Little Gabine. And then the last one, this lovely blue cheese. This is called Bovale. So on that goes. Beautiful slice of quince, just to go alongside. Then we sent you a little bit of apricot chutney. So I'm just gonna serve that in a nice little serving dish just alongside. And then lastly, let's get my fork on there. Fennel seed crackers, going really, really nice, all those cheeses. And of course that quince and a chutney. So we'll just gently arrange them all on our fork, like so. Get plenty of them on there. There we go, all ready to serve up. A few more, just like that. And that's our cheese course. To the table with your cheese notes. Impress your guests. Hope you've enjoyed this week's menu. Remember, lots more dishes on next week's uh, menu. Plus all of the extras, the roast uh, salad of lamb from Sunday menu, tarim slaughter with a couple of fish crackers. Have a look at the website. Hope you've enjoyed all these dishes and happy cooking.